as a record. It's Actually, really now it's at the top because I'm screen sharing, uh, but I know what you're yeah. doing. I just turned it on. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So our agenda is we're going to talk about the context of these stamps, the design, their production, how they were used. And I'll have to say that my examples of how they were used are pale in comparison to some of the others that I have seen, how the stamps were promoted, what they did with the leftovers, and then <laughs> after the stamps were out of service. I found this really nice picture of Pierre uh, de Brazza sitting on his camp chair. Isn't that a wonderful picture of our French explorer sitting in the Congo? And I want to give thanks to Barry Newton because um, he lives close to me, and many, some of you know his name. He was the editor of the, of the First Day Cover Society magazine for many years. He came over to my house knowing that I owned a bunch of French Congo. I exhibited it back in the mid-90s, and he bought it all from me. And then about three years ago, he was cleaning out his house in the process of downsizing, and he came back to me and said, Ken, you need to buy this all back. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. So we both have get credit for assembling this stuff. So the context of these stamps. Well, it was the 1900 Paris Expo and things were jumping there. There was a, an auction lot in the Feldman catalog in December 2019 of 1500 postcards from the uh, Paris Expo. And unfortunately, it didn't sell, but I had a chance to copy all these pictures from their website so that I could put them in here and remind us how neat that expo must have been. There was a rumor that the Belgian Congo was going to issue new pictorials. They already had some that they had issued in 1898. Uh, and it turned out to be a false rumor that they, they issued a couple of new values, but the new set didn't come out until 1910. But that got the French stirred up. That, the expo and the rumor that the Belgians were going to issue uh, pictorial stamps to promote Belgian Congo. So at that time, as I said, all the French stamps had been typographed. All the French stamps proper, all the colonial stamps. The only exceptions were some typeset local issues. If you think of uh, the early reunion or the reunion postage dues, Guadeloupe, uh, to mention another favorite country amongst those of us on this Zoom meeting. Uh, the the PNT could not produce engraved stamps, so they hired Chassipo to uh, print these stamps because they had already printed engraved stamps. When I did this back in, in uh, Atlanta a year ago, I knew that Chassipo had printed the Bolivian stamps, an example of which you see on the screen. And about a month ago, somebody wrote a question in about the, uh, the Cinderella's that had Mari's picture on them. And I found, he steered me to an article in an old, old France of Colonies philatelist. This is 19, I think 1962. And in there, it tells us the story of the little Bolivian adventure here where, um, the, uh, in 1894, employees of the Bolivian ministry in, the, in Paris used Chassipo to perpetrate one of the slickest bits of juggling in the annals of philately. They shortstopped a shipment of Bolivian stamps that had been printed in London and being sent via the Paris ministry to Bolivia. They substituted the Chassipo counterfeits and kept the genuine stamps that had been printed in London. They looked different. They were uh, on thicker paper and rather than thin paper. But nonetheless, when the stamps got to Bolivia, the authorities there accepted the counterfeit stamps as the real thing and they were released there for sale. But uh, that was how Chassipo got into the business of printing uh, uh, engraved stamps, which was now six years before the uh, 1900 pictorial issue. All right, to the design. The painter, the guy who designed these stamps was Paul Merwart, born in 1855, died in 1902, 
Uh, and if you look at the last billet, bullet there, he was actually sent to Martinique on official duties because he worked for the colonial uh, ministries and was killed when Mount Pele erupted in, in uh, 1902. So that was a rather unfortunate end for this painter. And this, you can read his bio there. I won't go into it in a great deal, but he was appointed the official painter for the, the uh, Navy, if you will, part of the colonial ministry. And the reason in part was brother worked for the colonial ministry and helped get the appointment for him. Now, Benjamin Daman, or Daman, oops, I got somebody coming in. There we go. Um, born in 1835, a little older than Merwart, lived till 1921, and he was known as a painter and an engraver. His most famous engraving, I've got some more people coming in, hold on a minute here. All right. Um, was the uh, engraving of Millet's painting, which you see here on the lower right. And he, he also engraved the Somali Coast camel issue and the Madagascar zebu issue, as well as a Danish stamp issue with uh, Christian King Christian on it. So what did they do? Demon started out with this beautiful essay. This thing is about five by seven and it is just marvelous to look at. Uh, it's very much just an enlarged version of the final stamp. I didn't go back and measure all the little details or to see if all the jungle growth is the same, but uh, fundamentally you recognize the design from this. Unfortunately, Philip Lindekens, a Belgian uh, who also collects French Congo, found this online somewhere and took an image of it, but I don't know where the image is from. So unfortunately, I couldn't use it in my article because I would have loved to put it in there. And uh, we don't know who has the copyright and we don't know where the, the uh, piece itself is. Then after that first one, Damon had to make something smaller because you can't use a five by seven label to mail a letter. So he engraved this now three color, small design, smaller than the issued stamp, beautiful engraving again, very fine lines, very fine detail, but it's pretty clear that it wouldn't have survived producing stamps very well. Uh, first of all, doing three colors would have been very iffy because we all see that even doing two colors had its problems and uh, it was too little. It, the design kind of got lost when you uh, looked when you looked at it from any distance. So out with that and in with a second leopard design. This plate of four that you see was the the size of all of them as far as we know. We don't know if they were just testing uh, the ability to get the four stamps lined up or to see if they could get the two plates to line up with the vignette and the frame. Uh, we don't know for sure, but these designs were produced in little plates of four, uh, two different plates now that the one on the previous page was a single die, uh, but this is clearly two dies and two colors printed separately. I can point out that the uh, leopard has a pointed ear in this essay. Uh, if you look, I can't, my, my cursor show? No, no. Yeah, we got him. Okay, my cursor is pointing at the blue leopard down in the corner, that little ear, and now it vanished. I don't know how to get it back. But that ear is pointed. Uh, I can't really guarantee that that's more authentic, but most of the leopard pictures that I found online had pointy ears rather than rounded ears. So then we go to the final stamp, which looks a lot like that previous essay little different size. They did a lot of trial colors at first doing just the frame and then doing the frame and the vignette. They did these trial colors on cardstock and on very thin paper, thinner than stamp paper. Uh, the two centimes was what I'll consider the original plate. And I believe what they did, and you, I 
pointed this all out in my article and my reasons for saying this, but fundamentally, if you look at that two uh, in the upper right corner, that is, it nearly fills the frame. When you look at a sheet or a parcel sheet of the two centime stamp, those twos are very uniform. They all fill the space just like that. When you look at, at them under a glass, the cross hatching is, is identical on each stamp and so on. So I believe that the original die was created with a two engraved in the, in the die. He created the plate of 100. He did his reinforcing and um, what do you want to call it? But he, he went over the plate and made it look pretty. And, and then a retouching, that was the word I was looking for. Then they, cre they copied the plate, erased the two from all 100 positions. I believe they probably then made four more plates because they needed six in total. And then he individually engraved all the other values in each of the 100 positions on each plate. And why do I say that? Well, even here on this slide, if you look at the two four centime stamps on the bottom from different positions, you can see that the four is positioned differently in the value block. The uh, one and the two fours don't fill the, the block the way the two does. The uh, fours are slightly different shapes and designs, and I'll show more of that as we go on. All right. Here is a, a uh, partial plate proof in brown of the 15 centime. If you look in the left margin of the block of, of 12 stamps, you can see the plate was bolted down um, and those marginal markings appear on the final stamps as well. And I've blown up a couple of the 15 value tablets so that again, you can see in position three, there's this fine cross hatching in the one but in position six, it's more of a vertical line with a, just a few uh, slanted scratches and not real cross hatching the way there is in position three. And these, if you look at all 12 positions, you can see that they're all different. Take a look in the uh, block here where you've got this very dark value of 15 in the stamp in the third row and the center stamp in that same row compared to some of the others. And that's all because it was engraved differently. Here's a proof sheet of the four centime or half the proof sheet. Again, you can see the marginal markings where the plate was bolted down to the press. These were all flat plate printed stamps, single sheets uh, fed in one at a time. And again, we know that because I have full sheets of many of these values and they all have uh, frayed paper edges around the borders on all four sides. So we know that they were not rolls of paper. Also, I haven't seen any really large pieces of the vignette, but the, I've seen several of these blocks of four where uh, the design varieties show up in the background as well. The position varieties show up. Whether they made one plate or six plates of these, I don't know. What I can prove from that sheet that we just looked at is if somebody had the interest and the time I believe that you could uh, figure out the positions of all 100 stamps on the sheet. And the reason I say that is one of these is from a two centimes proof sheet, the other is from a four centimes proof sheet. And if you look at where I've, I've uh, compared the back leg of the panther in position seven, you see that there's this little, the, where the two circles are, there's a kind of a tilted triangle, which is the front of the panther's leg. There's a shading line that's very close to the, the next blob of color above it. If you go over to position 36, that shading line is in the middle of that white space. And it's consistent from position to, or from sheet to sheet, but not from position to position. So that's why I think if you really took the time, you could go through all 100 and figure out varieties like this of all 100 positions on the sheet. Well, let's talk a little bit about the middle values now. The, the, the leopard was the 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 15, six values. The 15 centime, which we see here in a 
in a, again, a very large essay, uh, was never used for the Bacaloy woman. It was uh, the low values in the, of the Bacaloy was the 20, then it was the 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, and 75. Those were the six values. That postcard was written up in a publication online, and lo and behold, I actually acquired one, not used in the mail, but a, a mint postcard, just like this one, with the picture of the woman on it. And clearly, this is where he got his, where Merwark got his design. All the details in her dress, the spear, um, the, her, her naked chest, her hairdo, the position of her feet, all of it is identical. Although he did add that, that tool, looks like a hammer in her uh, left hand as she's uh, standing in front of us. But he's gotten rid of the background and so on. Well, he created small essays, again, from the same design. These are smaller than the issued stamps, printed in these little sheetlets of 12. And if you look, you can see that the bottom row of images is slightly shifted to the right, probably, what, half a millimeter or so. So they, were, they weren't doing things uh, perfectly at that point, but uh, they were still testing, how, testing their abilities to make sheets uh, from a single die. And in uh, the October journal, you'll see my article about this Bacaloy woman uh, design of these stamps. And there's a variety on this sheet, which you can't see, which I didn't blow up, but in position 11, there's a little marginal marking. So I'll leave you to read my article to find that. There are, are also some marginal markings. Uh, you can see at the top and the bottom, the little black dots, which are the screws that they screwed the die to the plate. And the horizontal markings, I believe they used to line things up when they were uh, matching the die, the two dies, the, the frame and the background. These came in six colors. Um, I suspect, again, that you could plate this, these if you really cared to, but because they're not the issued stamps, probably nobody does. I did, however, discover in position 12 this constant variety where there's a white space next to the left-hand tusk uh, where the black wasn't completely engraved. So uh, that is constant in every position 12 that I have seen. Over on the right is one of the other sheet colors, uh, a kind of a reddish brown, and it's the only error of these I've seen where the background is inverted relative to the frame, and yet the color dots line up at the top, so uh, they very carefully aligned it. Unfortunately, they aligned it upside down. They use these same dyes to produce small trial colors. And there are a few examples here. I have 19 examples in my collection, and they're all kinds of colors. Uh, the, the red frames are typical of four or five of them in my collection. Um, you can see in my lower left stamp there, the the uh, purple one, that gap, that white gap next to the C in the left-hand tusk, uh, telling us that that's position 12. There are, uh, the, the, things are not perfectly registered, but nonetheless, they're, they're getting better at making these little sheets as they were testing the colors. Then he came up with the final design. This block of four of the 30 centime is the, uh, yeah, it's from a black proof sheet. I have seen some larger pieces of this sheet, but I don't own them. I have no idea what the positions are uh, of those four, four stamps. But you can see the, the uh, background, the vignette, that this is from the uh, top center, so this is probably positions 5 and 6 and 15 and 16 from the uh, finished sheet. And you can see again there's, there's position varieties that I don't believe are just inking problems. It's possible they are, but I don't think so.
All right, can I ask whoever's doing that to mute, please? Thank you. Um, here is, as far as we know, they printed a black proof sheet for all the values. Here's the top six rows. Uh, Barry told me that uh, he was buying these from the guy who moved to, to New Zealand. Indigo. Indigo, thank you. He was buying these from Indigo. And apparently Ed was the, the guy's name. Ed had these full sheets and whoever bought the first block of four bought the, the bottom left corner of these, especially in the leopard design, because that's where you have that famous missing tusk variety. And uh, Barry got hold of him and said, stop, sell me the rest of the sheet without cutting it up. So he ended up with, with two of these, a 20 and a 75 centime. Um, and again, I would say that this 20 is the original die because the two and the zero nicely fill the value tablet on each position. They're all the same. They're all in the same position and they're all highly uh, cross-hatched, very, very good quality. So I'm thinking that those 20s were on the original die and not separately engraved in each position. Then a block of four, the brown proof sheet. Um, this from the bottom row, probably uh, six and seven. So 86 and seven, 96 and seven. And you can see again from these uh, two enlarged 75s that they're just plain different. They're in different places in the box. There's a uh, this is the one value where there appears to be a position dot in each box, uh, both at the bottom left and bottom right of the stamp, but they're just not the same. So I'm thinking that Damon went through and separately engraved the values in all 200 positions of the, for the 100 stamps on this sheet, on each sheet. Here's the, some trial colors of the 25, all similar to the issued colors, some on thick paper, some on card, some on thin paper. But they, again, they were just testing to see what they thought would look good. Then there's the varieties in the uh, Bacaloy final design. At least five positions have varieties. Position 28, which is, uh, on the lower left there, there is a scratch through Paul Merwart's name as though his burin slipped when, when Damon was touching that up. Um, there are missing leaves on the inside of the tusks in positions 91, 93, and 94. Actually, one of them has a single frond. Two of them have a single frond. One is completely missing the two fronds. Uh, and then there's a normal stamp in position 92. I actually, I now have acquired a sheet of the 20 son team so I can illustrate all the positions next to each other. And those will be in the article in the journal when it comes out in October. And then the, this oddball in position 49, you see how it, the 20 son teams, which I think is the original plate, it looks like a little oily spot instead of a nice round dot between the word Republique and Francaise at the top of the stamp. And by the time you get to the plate for the 75 centime stamp, it's this nasty splotch. Clearly it's inked. And when I examined the, the varieties, because I have an example of position 49 for all six values, the 20 centimes looks like this. The 40 centimes has a little bit darker splotch, but it's very similar to the 20. And then the other four values look very much like the 75 centimes. So I'm thinking that when they duplicated the plate from the 20 centimes value, they erased the values, then created four more plates from the erased value plate and they use that first erased value plate for, to create the 40 centimes and then the remaining four plates for the 25, 30, 50, and 75, since that blot looks so similar on the later, on those other values. The 
Then we go to the high values, the one, two, and five franc stamp. Again, I think the one franc was the original design. They made a plate from that, scratched out the value, and then duplicated the plate and, and individually engraved the two and the five value in each uh, stamp. If you look at the one franc and the two, and compare it to the two F and the five F, they really are very different in quality. The F itself is a very different uh, design as well. Now, there are no surviving sheets, but in the article that I have now sitting in peer review, I'm making the argument that these were indeed 100 image sheets just like the rest. And one of my arguments is that if this were a sheet of 50 stamps, we would be looking at positions uh, 38, 9, and 40, and 49, 48, 49, 50, because clearly there's nothing below and nothing to the right. And if that's true, then we should see one of those squares of marginal marking where the plate was fastened next to the stamp in row four. And this, I think, is it's clearly not there. I think that suggests that this is, is in fact, positions 88, 9, and 90, and 98, 99, and 100 on, the, on a 100 stamp sheet. So I, I will make my argument in print in uh, the January issue of our journal, and I'll let you guys argue with me if you have other opinions about this. One thing I will point out, and it'll show better on the next slide, is position 99. If you look uh, at the left side of the stamp, where you've got that warrior facing outward, at his back there is a column that goes up from, from, his, from the center of his back up to the top of the design. And if you look at that carefully, you'll see that it's both brown and red. There is a mistake in the vignette that should not be brown. It should be only red. And if you look at all the other positions, it is only red in all the other stamps. So that is a constant design variety. And in fact, in uh, Feldman's auction, which just closed this week, there was a five franc. So I was the successful bidder on that, I'm happy to say. So now I'll have an example of the five franc from that same position. And it too has the, uh, the salvage attached at the bottom of the stamp. So I know it's from the bottom row. Here you can see uh, in what I've labeled position 49, which I really believe is position 99, where that column is duplicated in both brown and red. Then there's a second design error, same kind of error where the column is engraved in both the vignette and in the frame. And I, I think in my uh, work subsequent to January, when I was down at Southeast Stamp Show and presented this, I think I've identified this as position 42. And rather than take you through all the logic for how I got there, I'll let you read about that in the article in uh, January. Here's uh, trial colors of the coconut grove design, all of the five rank and uh, both the president of Colfra, Elaine Hurpe, and I collect this. And he has a couple of two franc stamps that have that same top and bottom test perforation on their, on his stamps as well. And all of those are on card. Hmm. All right, that's the design section. Off we go on to production. Here's the full set. Really pretty, isn't it? Really colorful. Uh, very eye-catching. They started out printing these Perf 11 on thick paper. There were comments in the press at the time about how crappy they looked and the production was terrible. And in fact, I, I sent one of these stamps off, a scan of one of these stamps off to a friend to ask him a question. And he came back to me and said, are you sure these are engraved? It looks lithographed. That was one of the complaints about this was that the paper was so soft that the ink sank right into it and they did not look like engraved stamps when all was said and done. They did a second printing in 1904 that was on thin paper and by then they had converted to a perf 11 and a half uh, which again in, in uh, 
a subsequent article, which will probably be in the April issue, um, I will join the crowd and say that in contrast to the catalogs, the perf really measures about 11 and a quarter, not 11 and a half. These are the printing quantities, uh, both the number of stamps and the number of sheets. A couple of things strike me about this. One is that the Tencent team stamp, they only printed 100,000 of them compared to so many of the, the one, two, and so on, up to the 50. And then when you get to the middle values, uh, they taper off when you get to the 40 centimes value. And the high values, there's really very few of those. And those sheet numbers are based on sheets of 50, which now I think really are sheets of 100. So there's half as many of sheets of those printed, meaning that of that five franc stamp, there may only have been 100 stamps or 100 sheets printed at all. Now some of the varieties. Most of us who collect this at all know about the missing tusk, which is position 91 on every leopard value. Uh, very, very well known, identified in the catalogs, separately priced and so on. We don't know if this was accidental or purposeful, but if you look carefully there, you can see that the background is white where the tusk ought to be. So I don't know if Damon scratched it out just because he wanted to be able to thumb his nose or make it his signature on these uh, stamps. I, I just don't know. In position 94, the tusk is rounded. And if you compare that to the other three positions of the Tenson team there, uh, that tusk very much looks like it comes out behind the, the right hand tusk and is sawn off, if you will. But this rounded tusk is very, a very different shape and that's in position 94, consistent on all the sheets of the leopard. Here's a good example too. Notice in the position 91 of the 10 team, notice how the 10 in the value tablet is pushed right up against the right hand or the left hand side of the value tablet and the others are not. So this again, to me, is, is supporting my argument that those values were all separately engraved in all 100 positions. What else went wrong? Well, we had the two and the four printed in the wrong colors. There was examples of both of those. Uh, you'll you see the splotch in position 49, that's the 40 centime. And then over on the right, you see the five franc stamp where that vignette has the double column on the right hand side circled in red and on that same stamp there's a dot between the five and the f and it's the as far as we know the only position where this occurs i've i've seen a couple of these and they they show both the vignette error and the dot between the five and the f uh, so i'm thinking that's all all the same um, what else? We have frame shifted uh, up and down. Over on the right hand corner here, you see where the, the inking completely missed the left hand side of the one franc stamp. Some of this stuff I very much expect came out the back door at Chassapo. I don't think this stuff went to the post office. Oh, and another thing to point out here is on the, the blocks of the two and the 10, you can see the uh, ragged edge of the natural, uh, the natural edge from the paper making um, on both the, the right hand side and the bottom of the sheet. There's stamps with inverted frames and the reason I call them inverted frames is because the watermark is correctly oriented to the background. Uh, the 20 cent team, a double background, one of them printed upside down. Inverted vignettes of both the one franc and the five franc, um, a color error of which there are supposedly only 50, one sheet, but I think there's a hundred of those floating around. And then there are inverted watermarks, reverse watermarks, reverted and, uh, reversed and inverted watermarks. And on the five franc, I have seen in her, uh, Elaine Herpes collection, even a rose branch, which is supposed to be used on the Bacaloy woman stamps in error uh, printed 
on the five franc stamp. He has a block of four and I keep trying to get a, to liberate one of those stamps from him so that I could have an example too, but I haven't convinced him yet. They also had fun with perforations, all kinds of stuff. And again, this just looks like printer's waste, doesn't it? Double pervs, triple pervs, partial impervs. I mean, it's it just doesn't pass the smell test for something that got out of Chassapo through the front door and into the post office. I think the five son team is cataloged. I don't believe the others are cataloged. When the stamps were issued, this is back when the UPU demanded that uh, the printing, the, the countries all submit 800 sets of their stamps to the UPU so that they could be circulated around the world to all the various postal administrations indicating if you get a, a letter from French Congo, you can look in the book and make sure that it's a genuine French Congo stamp by comparing it to our, our page of French Congo. This, I don't remember which archive this is from. Uh, I do know it's a Portuguese colony. I don't know which of the colonies liberated its uh, uh, UPU stamps. I think it was Angola. Angola? I think it was. Either that or possibly Goa. Okay. Angola would make perfect sense because of all the civil strife, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, the note, the cursive note says there are 17 stamps. There's only 15 left on the page, which is the full set. So I don't know uh, which stamps were not, uh, were cut off. It could have been the two surcharge stamps, but I don't know. And interestingly, the 25 cent team is one of those that has that missing leaf in the uh, next to the word Francais in the tusk there. Well, then they ran out of low value stamps in 1903. So they authorized the local guy, authorized surcharging the 30 and the two with a five and a 10 cent team. They were, uh, there's numbers and I can't remember all of them anymore, but uh, there weren't very many that were actually sold and used. And the rule was that uh, to, to discourage speculation because stamp collectors would go crazy and try and acquire these things when they heard about it, you, the only way that you could acquire one of these stamps was to walk into the post office, present your item to be mailed, buy the stamp, stick it on, and have it canceled while you were standing there and the, the letter or postcard put in the mail stream. Well, that didn't happen because there's a lot of these certified as genuine, including these two, floating around in as mint stamps. We kind of think that these came out of the UPU because we don't think they needed all 800 stamps that got sent to them. The remainders were ultimately burned, so uh, there, there were I want to say 11 or 1200 examples of these stamps that are considered genuine. All right. So how did the, so that's how the, that's all the postal creations of these stamps, two printings of the original issue, the two surcharges, the five and the 10. So how did these stamps get used? A lot of the low values, the one, two, four, five were used just to indicate that you had been there. So people would buy postcards, they would apply a low value stamp, be too little to pay postage and uh, use it, get it canceled so they could say, well, I was in Brazzaville on February 10th, two, uh, 1905 and I can prove it because I have a postcard with a stamp and a cancel on it. It's great fun to find these small towns. Uh, and to give you an idea of how tough this is, I went on Dell Camp about a month ago and just took a, a crude census um, based on counting the number of postcards for sale uh, from Congo, those that had stamps at all, and then those that had legible cancels on those stamps. And you're down to 1% of the postcards or less that actually have a legible cancel. Uh, so I consider it pretty nice to find a small town and a, a legible cancel on it. And of course, bare naked ladies were a fan, uh, uh, constant subject of 
of these African photographers. Here's an example with a force on team stamp on it and a not very legible cancel. Uh, the one next to it is a, the chief and his family standing outside his hut, which actually was pretty good living at that in that location. This one is odd because it's a 20 centime stamp used on a souvenir card. It was not sent through the mail. Uh, it wasn't very common that people bought a, a high, an expensive stamp and put it on and didn't use it to actually mail it. This I like because the left-hand stamp is position 91, the missing tusk. And it's one of only a, cu of a couple of these uses that I have seen. Pays the right rate, went through the mail to Paris. Ed, you will recognize this. He bought this because he liked the group type stamp on it. I bought it from his collection through the, the uh, auction because I like the, the surcharge stamp on here. And uh, it's very, very cool. It pays the correct rate, uh, registry plus postcard mailing. The postcard goes to, to uh, Paris. It's forwarded to Calvados. So it's a pretty cool uh, stamp and usage. Very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And especially because it's ex Grabowski. <laughs> And he and I corresponded about this because I said, well, where's the postage for the receipt? And his answer is, Ken, it's on the receipt. It's not on the postcard. And of course, Ed is right. Now, they also had a printed matter rate. Those of us who collect this kind of stuff know about that rate, five words or less, and you can mail it for five centimes. These went, uh, the, the lower left card was part of a uh, postcard exchange. You can see the first two words below the stamp are for exchange. Um, went to Chicago, went to the Netherlands for five centimes. That's a real bargain. The 10 centime rate was the normal rate. This uh, uh, routing through uh, Cabinda in Lisbon on the lower left is, I won't say common, but uh, Anthony Torres has another card with essentially identical postal markings and rate uh, for sale on his website. Uh, the one on the right went to Romania, which I think is very, very cool. Here's some more 10 centime rates. The one on the right went to Vologda, Russia, and the one on the left is the rare surcharge stamp that is used in the correct period, used properly, and went to Brussels. This cover went to Germany, so now we're looking at letter rates, 25 centimes, proper rate. You notice that uh, it's routed through Cabinda and Lisbon, and as far as I know, that is how it traveled. Um, and I'm wondering, as I say there, whether or not, because Ribeiro is a Portuguese name, he had more faith in the Portuguese uh, postal system than in the French postal system. or it just could have been the next ship out. I don't know. And here is a, is a receipt with the 10 centime stamp, but not any 10 centime stamp with the surcharge 10 centime stamp on it. So that I consider one of my great rarities that I'm just tickled pink to have this. The only thing that could be better would be if it matched the postcard that uh, had the AR marking on it, but it does not. Even the guy, the call for a president, thought that was a pretty cool item. We see a lot of colorful uses, not all philatelic uh, from, from uh, Congo. The registered mail in the lower left, uh, the three tens and the five, it's, it's colorful, but it's a pretty straightforward way to pay the 25 cents plus 10 centimes uh, regular postage. Uh, the one on the right, it's 35, it's 40 centimes, um, probably not philatelic. It's very hard to tell uh, because they could have easily have used a 40 centime stamp or a 30 and a 10 or a 
you know, a 25 and a 15, but instead they put four stamps on and we get lots of pretty colors as a result. Now to promotion. Benjamin Deman made a, another set of small die Bacaloy woman stamps. Uh, here you see a die proof and the, the blue one has the serrated edge around it. I have five or six of those in my collection. Um, somebody has described that as a quiver, but to me it looks more like a dagger in a sheath. I really don't know what that little mark is. Um, but these are just, uh, if these were produced before the stamps were made, they're essays. If they're produced afterwards, they're just labels, right? And I'd, I don't know when these occurred in the process of, of making the stamps. I sort of suspect because the little dagger is on there or the quiver, <coughs> that these were his, uh, sam were made for his sample book to show what a cool stamp designer he was. Just recently, I acquired this sunken die proof, same, uh, same design, and he has autographed this one, which I thought was very cool. What else did they do? They had his presentation folder. Uh, mine is in two pieces. It was folded not quite in half. And on the original, you can actually see where the ink from the folded over sheet of paper kind of discolored the white paper stock um, of the two halves. Uh, her pay has one of these that's still intact and uh, looks everybody as nice as mine, if not a little better. But you have the progressive proof of the 1902 Somali Coast issue at the top and down below you have uh, essays of the, the uh, French Congo high values. And I also have a separate cutout stamp uh, this is not a blow up of the one in the folder there. <laughs> that the this to me proves that these were printed from the original plate, even though they're not in the right colors of the issued colors, because here's that dot between the five and the F and the error in the vignette with, uh, with the the uh, column printed in blue on the upper right hand side. And those of you who collect this area know too that there was a lot of hanky panky with those Somali coast stamps. They had uh, perfs and imperfs and colors and all kinds of stuff going on with that as well. Now, in a Feldman auction a while ago, there was a presentation box. And on this box, it says that it's uh, uh, for to be presented to Jean de Cray who is one of the colonial, who I believe is the uh, colonial, colonial minister of the, no, the minister of the colonial department. Inside that box are six cards, three progressive die proofs for the three different designs. And then on a separate card, I don't remember if I included a picture or not, we may get to one, um, six two centimes, six 20 centimes and three one franc stamps in the sort of issued colors, but not quite. These are all oversized. They're all bigger than the issued stamps. This just came in the mail to me today. I found this on Del Camp and uh, bought it from a guy in France. This is one of the big cards that the card itself looks like the one that we just saw for the leopard design, except it's horizontal. And uh, you can see it that in pencil, it's Merwart's autograph. And that's what his autograph indeed looks like. There's one of the cards. So there's the, the one franc in approximate issued colors the, for the one, two, and five values, but not quite. So there were six cards in that presentation folder. In addition, there's other, uh, I call them labels, of the, the values that are have these kind of uh, serrated edges. And we think those were given to people who were working in the ministry as souvenirs, but they didn't have enough stature that they were eligible to receive a nice presentation box with a leather, leather cover on it. What did they do with what they had left over? Because they didn't use them all up. Well, they created some revenue stamps. 
there's three examples, two of them use, I kind of think the, the five franc is a CTO of the remainders, but I don't know. And uh, there was also, there's a uh, two other or three other designs uh, or three other surcharges. And I have seen one in her pays collection. And again, he's got a pair and I'm trying to get, get them to break that pair up and sell one of the stamps to me because I don't have it. But I haven't talked him into doing that yet. In addition, in World War I, the French and the Brits invaded German Cameroon and partitioned it. So that green line that's work, that goes through the letter C of Cameroon is about how they divided things up. The French ended up with the bulk of Cameroon and the Brits got that little sliver that they attached to uh, Nigeria. The British used the leftover German yacht stamps and uh, surcharged and overprinted them. The French brought along some excess Congo stamps and they overprinted their own. And they come with overprints printed up and overprints printed down. On the 15, the, the uh, leopard, the only leopard stamp that was used, it's actually right side up, side up and upside down just because the stamp is horizontal instead of vertical in its basic design. And they did a, they overprinted a thousand of each French Congo stamp, 10 sheets of each stamp. And we think that it was as simple as they made up a cliche of 50 of these overprints, put the stamps in the press one way and then took the stamps out and turned them around and put them in the other way. And I have actually seen in an old action catalog pardon me, a, uh, a full set of four, I don't think the Frank values were in there, but the, all the Bacaloy woman stamps were uh, available in Tetbesh pairs. And just recently, this one came on the market, so I was able to acquire one. Here is the only known cover with one of these stamps actually used on it. And as I was putting together my exhibit, I thought to myself, there's one guy in the world who I know who might be able to tell me something about these things, these overprints, Marty Bratzel. So I wrote to Marty and I said, hey, Marty, what do you know about these? And he said, you know, Ken, I've only ever seen this one cover. And uh, he sent me a picture of it. And I asked him if he would part with it and he agreed to. Mm -hmm. So I now have it in my collection and my exhibit. And for that, I thank him very much. The people in Belgium and France also have never seen one of these stamps used on cover. So I have something to create a little envy in them as well. And it's big. You, you can see how small those stamps are. It's a big, big cover. What's the rate on the cover? What's the rate? It's 45 centimes and... <laughs> Um, I figured it out and I put it on my uh, on my exhibit page, but I didn't put it into my notes here for this. Yet. Okay. So what do we have? We have a 25 cent registry fee still in 1916, right? Yeah, the rate is correct. So it's it's 20 plus 25, right? Yeah, two tens, I think. It's yeah. a double weight. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's big and it would have been heavy. So, Ken, why do you have both the French, a French and a German uh, postmark on, on the front of this? That's a really good question. Same and date um, yeah. on both. We, th we the 15, think. The 15 is inverted on the uh, French uh, postmark. It is. I think that the, the French postmark, it's a, it's a 16, they're all inverted, Right. Uh, was when the, uh, the letter was accepted at the post office. And I think the, uh, the Violet German Council at the bottom was, was applied uh, prior to, di to dispatch. Oh, well, but the, the, the one at the bottom is the 15th. And if the French one is the 16th, then the... the... No, they're both 16. They're both 16. You can't see it. Is there, oh, okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, never mind. I, I was thinking that was a 15. Okay. Yeah. Right. 
Thanks. The Thank French you. and the British didn't get there till 16. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, these stamps weren't issued until, um, oh God, what was it, uh, April or May of 1916. Oh, okay. Yep. Wow. So, after the stamps were retired, Our Lady appears for years afterward as a representative of the Sangha. That's really why she's on here, but it's uh, Sangha Ubangi area of Congo. And uh, this, I found this on a stock certificate uh, issued in 1928, and her image continues on the share certificates into the 1930s. Clearly, it's her taken right off that postcard. So she lived on for many, many years, probably longer than she was alive, given how the life expectancy in uh, Central Africa. And that's it. Bravo. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. You're most welcome. So the question, do you guys have any questions? Yes, I do. Okay. So the example that you showed or the, you spoke about of the, uh, uh, the franc value of the coconut growth stamp with the watermark that would have been the Bacalwa uh, woman stamp. Mm-hmm. But the Coconut grow stamps are larger, aren't they, than the Bacalwa? Mm-hmm. So, for then you would expect to see the watermarks, the floral watermarks, all over the place. Uh, although apparently there's only one example that that, that you're aware of, and it, it looked like it was fairly well centered on that. But I would expect that on most copies, that the floral watermark would have been spaced for the Bacawa woman stamp, the smaller, that would have been all haywire on the coconut growth stamps, except for maybe one or two positions. I agree, and I can't imagine that the paper maker, actually, which was not Chassipo, Chassipo um, but I can't imagine that they mistakenly made a, a, a sheet of watermark paper, the wrong size, and right. then said, oh gosh, this is the wrong size, and didn't <laughs> destroy it, right? Yeah. So I'm guessing that the printers simply grabbed the wrong size sheet of, uh, wrote the wrong paper, stuck it in the press, and printed one sheet. Okay. Interesting. And again, a lot of this stuff looks like it came out the back door. The perforation varieties, the inverts, the off-center backgrounds and frames. It just, it has that aroma to it, shall we say. Anybody else? Uh, Ken? Yeah, Ed? Um, I have an item I'd like to show. I've been struggling here to get an aspect you didn't catch and see if I've got one here. Do I I just share screen? Let me turn it on. Okay. Now, see if you can successfully share screen. Okay, here we go. Yes, we did, and here it comes. Provisional use is postage due. Oh, wow. From Moyen Congo with a nice uh, explanation by the postal clerk at the left. Oh. I, 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 think it's, I think it's legit. It's a double weight, two, two times 15. Two times 15, is that right? No, maybe it's a triple weight. Because it's 10 sound teams then. But I had a couple of provisional uses in that in the group type collection. You this did, one. and this actually is now in my four walls here. What uh, do you mean in your four walls? I I now own this. Oh, you do. Oh, I do. And uh, I okay. was. Then I stand corrected. 
I just I I uh, didn't add it to my presentation. Just threw oversight in. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. But thank you. Take control back. <laughs> uh, you just tell it to stop sharing. Okay. Or I can do that. I guess it's, there we go. It's done. Yeah, uh, you know the vagaries of our hobby. I I bid on those two items, the one that you saw that's extra bossy, and this cover that Ed just showed us, and uh, was the unsuccessful bidder on that second item. It turned out that our friend Terry Lalave at Ladunum bought it, oh, yeah. put it in his auction, so I ended up having to pay a lot more the second time I bid for it. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? The McAvoy woman, uh, large proof sheets. Uh, are you interested in acquiring any more? Because I have a friend in Paris who has uh, a sheet. Really? Yeah, it's a sheet of '96. There's a bulk of four missing from it. He bought it from it. He bought it from Ed Weiner in uh, Indigo a number of years ago. And I'm guessing the four positions missing are ninety, one, two, three, and four. I believe that is what is missing. Yeah, of course. It's been a, been a number of years since I've seen it, but uh, he does does have it. Yeah, I just acquired a full sheet of the twenty cent team, all all the stamps there. So okay. I'm I'm not sure, Marty. Okay. Anyway, if if you're interested, um, let me know and I'll I'll get a hold of them. Thanks. Anybody else? All right, four weeks from tonight, right? The last Tuesday in October, we will do this again. Okay. And it'll be somebody else's turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it I you? can't guarantee it will take 90 minutes to go through this because I will only cover one stamp. <laughs> not, not a full series, so there is not that much of, you know, of things to share, but it will touch on, on some, some history on Guadeloupe, some of the, the fiscal aspect, the postal aspect, different things, uh, some updates to, to catalog, some of the archive. So it should be interesting if you want to know more about that, that famous, you know, 10 cent stamp with the, with the kittens over print and the frame with the, with the bees. Uh, it's of course on the tip, tip group, uh, since that's my, my passion. Uh, so. Excellent. Join me, join me then. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, yeah. if anybody cares, I think we're done in time to go watch the uh, the, the presidential debate. The big debate. <laughs> <laughs> this fight. And if nobody cares, we're still done in time for that. <laughs> All right. Well, Ken, thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. Uh, thank, thank you, Ken. That was great. Thank, thank you, Ken. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you next month. Take care. Peace.